Often when we think of audio dongles, we might think of those adapters which are used to facilitate the use of wired headphones when a mobile device lacks any sort of headphone output. Those devices normally tend to simply serve to fill that void, rather than to be specifically designed to enrich someone's portable audio experience. Up until now, if you wanted to have really good audio on the go, you'd have to lug around an external DAC device or in many cases a complete standalone portable player. However, that is all set to change due to a small company by the name of Ewanda. And the reason for that is because they've created what we can only describe as a little piece of audio magic. One of the first things that struck me about this device is perhaps just how unassuming it looks. Sure, we've got the logo very nicely laser etched into the housing, but there's also nothing immediate about it which doesn't give you that made in China kind of vibe. Let's be clear, the device very much is made in China, but upon closer inspection it becomes evidence that this little device has been crafted with a fair amount more care and attention than your average audio dongle. If you want a closer look at the design, then head on over to the link down in the description, because for the purpose of this video, it's much more important that we discuss the sound and value of this device. In the written review, I also cover the very interesting solution used here to ensure that the 9038 SG3 can be used with very sensitive IEMs, as well as some rather power-hungry full-sized headphones, so do check out the full review. All you really need to know right now is that, yes, it does look rather generic, but it has been built really well thanks to the CNC machining process and as a result it doesn't really feel like a cheap and fragile dongle. The device does also support PCM streams of up to 384kHz and DSD streams of up to DSD256. But as far as outputs are concerned we currently only have the option of having a 2.5mm balanced output. Unfortunately, you also can't use a regular 3.5mm to 2.5mm adapter as that could completely kill the DAC inside of the device. As the name suggests, the DAC chip used here is the Sabre ES9038 and this particular version is the Q2M. It is indeed a very capable unit and the engineering behind this particular design has brought out the very best of that capability. Unfortunately, the device is purely a dongle, meaning that it does not have any form of an internal battery, and thus it is entirely powered by whatever source device it is connected to. I tested this out with the Fio M6 and I got a total playback time of 15 hours when using the Dunu DK3001. However, when using the 9038 SG3 connected to the M6 and playing at the same effective volume, the battery life of the M6 dropped to just under 8 hours. So this will vary from device to device, but it may be something important to keep in mind. Another slight disadvantage of this device is that there are no physical volume controls, although the USB bridge implemented here does enable hardware volume control. So when listening to the 9038 SG3, you'd have to control the volume from the source device. So overall, yes, the device does have some obvious limitations and it does require some rather quirky means of operation, but the absolute best and surprising thing about it is the sound quality that you can get out of this tiny device. Now, because the dongle can only work with a balanced cable, I unfortunately cannot do any frequency response measurements of the device itself, since my measurements rig is entirely single-ended. So that only leaves me with one other option, and that is to try and describe the sound in an entirely subjective manner, which is something I really do not like to do. Nevertheless, I'll try to do my best, but just know that this is based entirely on my perception rather than any objective sort of measurements. Normally, whenever I listen to different players and decks, the differences between their respective sound signatures is pretty minimal. Once they are properly volume matched, some nuances might be a little more noticeable than others, but for the most part, it's incredibly subtle. The 9038S, on the other hand, presented me with something less subtle than what I'm used to. When I first started listening to it, I couldn't quite put my finger on what it was that felt different, but there was something. I proceeded to listen to it for another 10 or 15 minutes, and slowly but surely, I started noticing something, or rather the lack of something. It's only really when I started listening to some other devices that it became more clear to me. And that is the key word here. It was clear. It's as though every other device I could get my hands on to listen to just had this subtle lack in transparency. When listening to the 9038 SG3, it's as though there was just something between myself and the music which had been removed. 
Honestly, I'd hate to resort to anything which might seem like hyperbole, but it really felt like I was just being immersed into the music by an extra step or two. Using the HD58X and the DK3001 Pro, I consistently felt as though vocals just seemed clearer and more natural. I got the sense that I was listening to something which didn't feel like a recording, but instead had this added realism to it. One of the things I usually pay close attention to are cymbal strikes, particularly how natural that metallic nature of it comes across and how natural it feels as the notes drift away. On the 9038 SG3, they sounded as good as I have ever heard them. It really is remarkable the level of sound quality I could get out of this tiny device. Again, I listened to a couple of different players, including the M15, as well as iFi's HipTac and the Fio K3, and I consistently found myself either preferring the 9038S or simply not finding a significant enough difference to nominate a clear-cut winner. At this point, I am completely rethinking my stance on whether I personally even want a dedicated standalone player. But the fact remains that even if I was to continue using something like the little Fio M6 as my dedicated player and source device, the 9038S will remain almost permanently attached to it, despite the fact that I can only get around half the battery life out of the M6. So I guess it comes as no surprise to anyone that I feel the value this little device packs is just incredible. For a very long time, dongle DAX favored the convenience of a small form factor whilst taking a knock in the sound quality and output power departments. However, with the 9038SG3, this compromise simply isn't there. As it turns out, you very much can get an incredibly small package to deliver enough power to drive some pretty demanding headphones, and you can do that while still getting truly exceptional sound quality. However, what is perhaps the most difficult thing to wrap my head around is the fact that this little piece of magic will only set you back around $80. Honestly, great quality portable audio has never been more accessible than what it is right now in 2020. You really, truly don't have to spend a great deal of money to get great audio. If you like a more neutral sound signature, then you could perhaps opt for something like the new 10T2 Plus, which costs around $70. Then add a decent quality 2.5mm balance cable, which might set you back roughly $30 to $50, and then the final $80 cost of the 9038 SG3, and what you have is a really great setup, which would set you back around only $200 or so. The only real con I would say the 9038SG3 has is the fact that you must use a proper balance cable with it, as this would mean the majority of people would likely have to get a new cable for their favorite headphones if they want to use the e wonder But really, this is a very insignificant disadvantage when weighed against all of the positives that this device has on offer. So if you've been looking for a new DAC device or have perhaps been considering scaling down your portable setup, then I highly recommend that you check out the 9038SG3. I really, really am that impressed with it and it has quickly become my new benchmark for overall value and sound quality. Well, I hope you enjoyed that review as much as I enjoyed making the review and reviewing the unit itself. If you did like it, hit that like button, and if you disliked it, hit that dislike button twice. That's all from me for now, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.